Good morning, good morning, good morning to you, my brothers and sisters. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and we welcome you to this virtual worship service for the Flat Rock AME Church in the Antrefield community of Abbeville, South Carolina. I am Adam L. China. I am the newly appointed pastor of Flat Rock AME Church, and I consider it an honor to be here and an honor to serve you, and we are praying that God will bless each and every one of us as uh, we begin our journey together in building up the kingdom of God. Uh, at this time, we're ready to begin the worship. We're going to open with prayer, and we ask at this time we'll focus all of our attention towards the throne of God. Let us pray together. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We come to you this morning first to say thank you, before, because before we ask you for anything, we want to first say thank you for everything. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another day, a day that you have made, and therefore we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We thank you, God, for last night's slumber and for this morning's rising. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who is our savior, our mediator, our redeemer, and our advocate. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and our guide. Now, God, uh, we thank you for the Flat Rock Church family. We thank you for every person who is viewing this worship experience this morning or listening on the conference call line. We pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit would saturate our hearts. Lord, saturate the sanctuary, saturate our homes, saturate our Wi-Fi signals, our computers, our telephone lines. And Lord, above all, put us in tune with you. Now, Lord, move as only you can through the preaching of your word. I avail myself to you. We pray, O oh God, that you would open every ear that your word is heard. Touch every mind that your word is understood. Open and touch every heart that every word, that your word is accepted and believed. And Lord, touch this, my tongue, that your word might be proclaimed. And we pray, Lord, that your word would save, deliver, and set free. And above all, Lord, we pray for not so much for a good sermon, but for a sermon that would do us some good. So, Lord, let the spirit of the living God fall fresh on us now. Let the words of my mouth bring you praise and the words that I speak be seasoned with your love and grace. This we ask in the name of your son and our savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. For the next uh, portion of this service, we want to call your attention to the scripture reading and the text for the sermon this morning. We want to call your attention to the Matthew's gospel, the 11th chapter. Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through verse number five, Matthew chapter 11, beginning at the second verse and reading through the fifth verse. And the King James Version reads this way. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto them, Art thou he that should come or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. They asked the question, are you the one that should come or should we look for someone else? And Jesus told them, go and tell John what you've seen and what you've heard. For the next few minutes, we ask that you would pray with us and pray for us. I want to speak to you simply from this subject, an impressive resume. An impressive resume. Um, if you are like me, uh, you're probably really glad that the uh, election is over. Uh, you're glad that we don't have to see any more uh, ads or commercials. You don't have to see any more debates. We don't have to uh, have text messages from candidates, uh, them calling your house with robocalls, campaigning and soliciting your vote for uh, different offices. Now, I understand right now we have a, we still have not seated the president right now. We know there's there are court challenges, even though there's a clear winner in this past election. 
Uh, but at the same time, at least the campaigning is over. And what I've noticed is that those who are campaigning all uh, would offer unto you everything that they've done. They gave you a list of things they had done because they wanted you to see what they had done. Because I was always taught that if I want to know what you will do, in many cases, all I have to do is look at what you have already done. And so they would share with you uh, different ways they've served, the impacts they've made in their communities and so forth, all because they want you to choose them. Even now uh, in Georgia, they have, they have uh, runoffs for their Senate seats. And now even this morning, I listened to uh, one of the candidates for the senator's uh, seat uh, talking about his own resume, resume and telling you what he had done and how hardworking he is. And he may very well be. Uh, there were those even in the presidential election who talked about everything that they could do. Everybody wanted to put their resumes up against others to show you why they were the ones that should be cho chosen. I would offer unto you, my brothers and my sisters, that while we need resumes and they do give us, they give a detailed history of our work and what we have done, our accomplishments, that's wonderful because when you go to apply for a job, they will almost always ask for a resume. The resume tells them everything they need to know about you. And unfortunately, unfortunately, there are those who have fluffed up their resume. I don't want to say lie, but they added to it more than it really was because it made them seem more impressive. But I would offer unto you, my brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, you can put anything you want to on the paper. But word of mouth carries you farther than anyone else. You need references who can speak on your behalf to, to solidify or to verify what is on your resume. Well, now we have finished in the United States. The elections are pretty much over except for a few runoffs. We know there are court challenges for the office of presidency, but I would offer unto you that it does not matter who you voted for just over a week ago, almost two weeks ago. None of that matters as much as who you choose to be the Lord of your life. Uh, I want to offer unto you, my brothers and sisters, that you and I need Jesus the Christ to be our Lord and our leader because he is the one who has the most impressive resume. Uh, he is. He came from royalty. He was the son of God. He is the son of God. We know he he's he has he's been with God from the beginning and therefore he knows and he has seen all there is to know about us. He is the most powerful one in the universe, the most powerful being that has ever walked the face of the earth, not because he had a position, but because his resume suggested he had the power to do whatever we needed done. And so with that in mind. When we look at our text in the 11th chapter of Matthew, we find Jesus really has just assembled his 12 disciples. It is in chapter 10 of Matthew where we see that Jesus commissions his 12 disciples along with other disciples. And he sends them out into the world to go and spread the good news, which is the gospel that the Lord has come and that he has come to restore Israel, not so much in a social way or in an in a, in a economic way or in a military sense, but he has come to restore the soul of Israel. We heard uh, President-elect Joe Biden talking about how he was running because he wanted to uh, help to, to reestablish or help to preserve the soul of these United States. Well, Jesus came years ago to preserve the soul of his people and all who would believe in him. Oh, if we read in the text, we find in chapter 10, Jesus calls them, the 12, along with others, and he sends them out to spread the message. And they come back and they let Jesus know all the things that they have done. That They let it be known that even the demons had to fear when we spoke to them. And Jesus lets the disciples know, don't celebrate what you have done. Celebrate the fact that I chose you and used you to do my will. My brothers and sisters, don't ever get so caught up in who you think you are or your own resume that you think it's you. You ought to say, God, I thank you for calling me and I thank you for using me to do your will. Oh, with the text we find in chapter 11 now that Jesus's cousin, John the Baptist, is now in prison. John, if you read the scriptures, you will see that he was the older cousin of Jesus. As a matter of fact, John's mother, Elizabeth, was pregnant at the same time that Jesus's mother, Mary, was pregnant. And, and the scriptures let us know that even when they came in contact, both of the babies started leaping in their wombs because they could feel the spirit of God in each one of them. And it's something about being around people who are filled with God's spirit, especially when you are filled with God's spirit. Because And I, and I just pray that when we get together for worship that that if I come feel that you come feel I believe the Lord will show up and we have a good time worshiping 
his holy name. Oh, Jesus now is, is heard that his cousin John is in prison and John was the forerunner for Jesus. There were those who wanted to make John the Messiah. And John let them know, no, I'm not the one, but the one who's coming. I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes. Even in the church, it is, I don't care how long you've been a member of Flat Rock. I don't care how long you've been a member of whatever church you're a member of. I don't care how long you've been preaching or you've been pastoring. Understand, it's never been about you. And don't ever allow people to put you on such a pedestal that you block Jesus out. Oh, Jesus goes on. As he now hears that his cousin John is in prison, the Bible says that John sends two of his own disciples who are following him and tells them, go to beat this man named Jesus. Even though John was in prison, he heard what Jesus was doing for others. He heard about the miracles Jesus was working. He heard about all the works of the Lord. And he said, go and find out if this is the one we've been looking for or should we look for somebody else? Oh, if you keep reading, you'll find <clears throat> that when they come to Jesus, Jesus tells them, I tell you what, I'm not going to tell you I'm the one. Just check out my resume. You'll see on my resume all that I've done, and that ought to let you know who I am. Well, I offer unto you that Jesus says, just go tell John that the lame walk. Tell him that the deaf can now hear. Tell him that the dead have been raised up. Tell him that the poor are now hearing the word of God. Tell John what I have done. And so Jesus, after saying that, he tells him, y'all go back and let him know and decide for yourself if I'm the one you're looking for. Well, as I get and I'm, I'm coming close to the end, but if you look at a resume, it has usually at least three things on it. First and foremost, the, your resume usually has your educational background, what schools you went to, where you graduated from, and so forth. But I would offer on you that if we were to look at the resume of Jesus the Christ, we would find a few things. First off, he was taught by the best. God the Father. He had never been to meteorology school, but he was a meteorologist because he spoke to the wind and the waves and said, peace, be still. Well, he was never an oceanographer, but yet he spoke to the seas and told the seas to be still. He was not a mortician. He had never been to mortuary school, but he could look at a dead man and say, get up. Look at a dead girl and say, get up. Go to the grave of a man who'd been dead for four days and say, come forth. Uh, he was not, he had never started astronomy in school, but he watched God when God hung the sun and the moon and the stars and the sky so much so that he was named an honorary student because we called him the bright and the morning star. I would offer unto you that you can go to school and your education is wonderful, but there's nobody that knows everything except the Lord Jesus the Christ. Oh, secondly, my brothers and sisters, yo, 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 your resume has your accomplishments in life, awards that you've won, uh, different things that you have accomplished in your life. Well, Jesus the Christ, if we were to look at his resume, we could find out a whole lot about it. What names and accolades could we give to Jesus? Well, he is been called, he has been called the Lily of the Valley. He has been called the Rose of Sharon. He has been called a battle axe in the time of battle. He has been called shelter in the time of storm. He has been called a redeemer. He has been called a strong deliverer. He has been called a strong tower. He has been called Mary's baby. He has been called the son of the living God. I would offer unto you that if you were to look at the resume of Jesus the Christ, you would see that he is well qualified to be the Lord of your life because of what he has accomplished. Who else could walk on water but Jesus? Who else could get up from the grave but Jesus? Who else could speak and rain down the by glory of God but Jesus the Christ? If you want somebody in your life to lead you to believe in, I dare you to call on Jesus because he's accomplished so much already. Finally, uh, what, what do you find on a resume? You find your educational experience? Uh, you find uh, your accomplishments? And any good resume ought to have some references. Somebody who can verify that you are who you say you are and that you've done what you said you've done. Well, Jesus told him, go and ask the lame. That's what he said. They not walk. 
Go and ask the blind. They now see. Go and ask the lepers. They are now cured. Go and ask the lame, the dead, all those people. Ask them. Ask the, those who are poor in spirit. Because now they can hear the good news of the gospel. Well, my brothers and sisters, if we were to go back down through the resume of Jesus, we can just go back to chapter 9 of Matthew. And we can find all the resume, all the references that we need. Well, we find there in chapter 9 there was a man who was uh, on his sick bed. He was paralyzed. He came, his friends brought him to Jesus. He came on his sick bed, but he left his bed. He left with his bed on him. He would tell you that Jesus is the son of God. Uh, if you don't believe that, you can ask Matthew, who was a setter, who was at the tax collector's table, but yet Jesus came to him and called him out and said, follow me. He would tell you he is a redeemer. You can go and ask those, those sinners that Matthew invited to sit down and eat with Jesus, and they would tell you that he is a savior. You can ask Jairus, whose daughter was dead, but Jesus raised her back up, and he would say he has power over death, hell, and the grave. You can go and ask that woman with an issue of blood, and she would tell you that he is a phlebotomist because I touched him. All I did was touch the hem of his garment and I was healed. You can go and ask those two blind men who came to Jesus and they will tell you that he opened up my blinded eyes. And so my brothers and sisters, that's their reference. That's their testimony. But what can you and I say about Jesus? Can you say that he's your healer? Can you say he's your deliverer? Can you say he's your savior? Can he say he's lifted up your broken heart, your bowed down head? Can you say he's lifted up your broken heart? Do you know him for yourself? And if you know him, you ought to be able to go and tell others, come see the one who changed my life. Now, as I get ready to close, there's a story some of you may have heard, an old story about a man by the name of Blue. Blue was into everything that was bad. He was a drug dealer. He was a pimp. He was in gang. He ran gangs. Blue did everything that, that was wrong. And so one day, Blue was standing on the corner with some of the girl, women who worked for him. And he told them, y'all stay here, I'll be back in a little bit. Blue walked down this alley and turned to the right, and Blue didn't come back. Hours passed by, there was no Blue. Days passed by, there was no Blue. Weeks passed by, no Blue. After about two and a half months, one of the girls who worked for Blue said, well, I've got to go find him. I, I'm concerned about him. The last time I saw him, he went down that alley and turned right. So one Sunday morning, she went down that alley and she made the right turn. And at the end of that right turn, it ran, it ran into a church. She went into the church and sat on the back row, hoping that somebody there knew something about Blue. Well, the preacher preached well. The choir sang well. They had a good time in worship. And when the preacher opened the doors of the church, this young woman came to the altar in tears. And when the preacher saw her, he said, young lady, why did you come down? Did you come down because you like the location of this church and you want to be a part of us? She said, Reverend, this church is located very well. It's right close to where I live. That's nice. She said, but that's not why I came. He said, well, that's fine. Did you come because our choir sang so well? She said, uh, Reverend, your choir was excellent. I love the way they sang, but that's not why I came. Well, the preacher then said, well, I tell you what, did you come because I preached so well and you liked the way I exegeted my sermon? You liked my, uh, uh, my homiletical, homiletical skills? She said, preacher, you did a fine job, but you are not the reason I came to the altar. Finally, the preacher said, well, then why did you come? The sister looked at the corner and pointed at the usher. And she said, do you see that usher over there? The preacher said, yeah. She said, that usher is my friend, Blue. She said, and I, y'all got a good thing going here, but I want to meet the man that can change Blue from a pimp and a gangster into an usher in the Lord's house. My brothers and sisters, when we present the resume of Jesus the Christ to the world, they too will want to know what is it about this man that can change other lives. Now you can tell them what he did for the people in the Bible, but tell them what the Lord did in your life. Tell them how he changed you. Tell them how he delivered you. And then we will grow the kingdom of God to his glory and to his honor. <clears throat> Thank God. 
for an impressive resume from our Lord Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for this, your word. We thank you for this worship experience. The Lord, we know that your resume far exceeds that of any other person or any other being in this universe or in this world. Now, God, we pray that if there's someone watching who has not received you as their Lord and Savior, they will look at your resume and know they need you in their lives. We pray, oh God, that if there's someone here who's watching or listening on the call, who may be, be, who may be saved but have strayed away, we pray, Lord, that they will be drawn back to you and you will draw them closer to you so that they will recommit their lives to you and live for you. We pray, oh God, if there's someone who doesn't have a church home, they will contact us. They will reach out to us and we can receive them here at Flat Rock. Bless, we pray. And Lord, continue to draw us closer to you every day. And Lord, we know that every testimony you give us just adds to your resume and adds to our witness that we can share with us. So bless, we pray. Keep, we pray. Draw us near, we pray. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, we thank God for you. We thank God that you're a part of this experience. We pray that you'll join us each week on YouTube or on the church's Facebook channel. Uh, we'll be worshiping, worship, worshiping virtually until we uh, come together again when the pandemic is over. When it's safe, we'll return. But as for now, this will be our mode of worship. You can call in on our conference call line. You can join us uh, on, uh, on the Flat Rock AME Church Facebook page or on our YouTube channel and uh, be a part of our worship virtually each week. We invite you to come. Like uh, the YouTube, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the church's Facebook page and share the message. Share that God is moving at Flat Rock. Share his message and reach out to one another. My brothers and sisters, we also ask and invite you rather to join us for Bible study each Wednesday at 12 noon and 6 p.m. You can join us on the church's conference call line, which is listed below. We invite you to be a part of us there. You can also worship on Sunday mornings, if you don't want to get online, you can join the conference call line as well. We also invite you to give uh, and give as God has blessed you to give. Uh, your tithes and offerings, you may use Givelify. And if you search Flat Rock AME Church, uh, you will see in Abbeville, South Carolina, you can give electronically. If you'd like to uh, drop your tithes off of the church, someone will be here from 1030 until 12 p.m. Sunday morning, every Sunday morning to receive the tithes and offerings. So uh, if you choose any way you choose to, we invite you to give as God has blessed you to give. And you'll find that those who give and trust God with their money, God blesses us exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. Your, your blessing does not, always, does not always come back in a financial sense, but God always blesses you with more than you could ever ask if you trust him with what you give. So we thank God for you. I look forward to meeting you all. I look forward to working with you all. And we look forward to... Uh, uh, continuing to serve this community, serve God, and serve God's people. At this time, let us receive the benediction. And now I went to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be all glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone.